We're going to pick up at 12.45. Um, you'll see as the ladders light up, um, we have the Bund here, which is the core market that we're going to be looking at, and then the Bobble, the German five-year, which also comes into play. Um, so the highlights come out, the actual structure of the press release has changed, which means that none of the highlights we've planned for really come out um, or give us as much information as we like. So um, this trader has kind of had to initiate his trade based on a kind of a bit of a hunch that something's changed, the highlights aren't there, and really based on the flows and the initial blip from the market that the hawkish scenario has come into play. So just want to pay attention to the buns here and see how quickly he reacts. Okay, so very quickly we've gone from 74s, just going to hold it up there, opening price at 74s. Now what we can see is the market's blip down maybe 10 ticks, you can see it's very very thin so it wouldn't have took very much. You know we had some traders who managed to execute off the same Reuters screen dump at 74s on our floor so we know he got a bad price. I think he tried to hit market or hit a hit market around 66s, didn't get filled, so then immediately had to um, had to sell the low, and um, and then as soon as he's gone on side a little bit, he's added again into the lows, and he's now looking to add a little bit more. Average price of 57s with 100 lots, and we're looking to attack that level at 43s towards the low, going through, I think, 37s, um, which was Tuesday's daily low. So we're just going to see how he manages this trade as we approach that level. So a slight pullback. He's now 150 lots short in the buns. And this, this trader's style is getting with big size and then start to execute with um, smaller size. Just want to draw your attention to it. As he's got in the bund, and it's gone on side. He's now also drawing his attention to the bobble. Um, you know, the five year, these two should move in tandem. Anything that comes up from the ECB that's generally rates driven, um, it will likely have a good impact on the five year as well. And it's a slightly thicker market usually, um, which you can see here. I mean, it is slightly thicker than the Bund, but you know, it can be a little bit more stable to trade sometimes as well. But anyway, this trader, he wants to execute as much as he can. He's now Nicely on side, um, you know, we've got this 43s level coming in at um, just two ticks below the lows. So we've not managed to break it there, but in with size and then clipping out with small, um, with small clips, twos and ones, just kind of looking for your, your market to just start trimming away and scaling out gradually, but really wanting to hold this and see what flows come in below 43s. So at this point, still going on side, everything looking quite good. I just want to pause it there quickly. So what's happened is the hawkish, the hawkish expectation of what that initial screen dump was presenting to us has now come over the squawk that there was a, another line which wouldn't necessarily have been um, that apparent to the traders looking at their Reuters because the structure's trained so much which actually gives an indication that although they've tapered um, the QE, you know, they've adjusted the, uh, and pushed out the, the expectations of when the rate rises will potentially come in. Now, one thing that you have to recognise is anything that mentions rates specifically, you know, you're going to have an impact in the market, especially in the five year. And although the trader was committed to the short, at this point, you know, that's some more information that he's just taken on board and, you know, potentially, um, potentially just tempering his aggression just a little bit, you know, waiting to, waiting to see some more confirmation. Now, I want to draw your attention specifically to the bobble here because the bobble is the key to this whole trade. So, you can see, maybe if I can take it back just quickly, I want you to look to see what happens around 84s. You can see we're about to take the lows and then we will blip up on a 5,000 lot that comes in on the bid in the bubble. And then it takes, um, takes 85's bid with 4,000 lots and now we're just trading above it. So I'm just going to see if I can bring this back. 
and just watch the bobble here and see what happens. You see that? So 5,000 lot comes into, um, into the bobble and I think it's clipped for a bit but it stays bid at 4,000 lots. Now immediately this trader's thinking right there's two things that should happen now. Either this should be taken out, someone wants to get filled on it, should trade down 85 bid, trade into it and take it out and then blip through and potentially get out of some of his size and look for the continuation. Or just sending some alarm bells into his mind that, you know, if that doesn't get traded out or if that bid holds, potentially there's something else going on, some more detail within that press release that you know, we really need to pay attention to that might adjust our execution on this trade. So as you can see, we're not trading back down towards, um, towards 85, it's where the 4,000 lot is. He actually sells some more, so he averages a little bit into this position and is looking for this 3,000 lot to be taken out and to blip through and fill him on some of his resting bids. So just picking up where we're at now, you know, we're short, I think around 120, maybe 150 buns. We've traded down to two ticks above the ledge that we have that we saw on the profile in the buns, and we've not taken it out. We've now pulled back, he's managed to scale out with some of these smaller clips um, to his average price of about 50 lots, which isn't huge for this trader at 57s. We've gone on side in the bobble, We've then gone offside as this big bid's come in and we've averaged our position a bit. We've scaled out of maybe a third of that position, but you know, in this very short amount of time, this trader's having to compute all of these different bits of information. This is now the key. This is you know, really the position that's going to, um, that's going, or the market that's going to give him the information as to what to do next. So I'm just going to continue playing here. So you see we're trying to trade closer to those 85s in the bubble, scaling out of most of his size in the buns, but still not able to take out that 3000 lot. Just gone bid again and now moving up higher. So at this point you've now you've got some extra information, right? The, the structure of the press release has changed. You know there might be something in there that, you know, maybe read in a slightly different way. It's not uncommon for the ECB to, you know, offer a, a, a dovish taper or, or try to manage the message and balance the message that they're sending. So you have to be astute to the fact that although this market's very thin in the buns and, you know, you, you're expecting to get potentially some pretty wide rotations, we're now 20 ticks away from the low that we've made and the bobble has come back quite a bit as well. And just to note, when, when, when the buns was back towards these 57s, you know, the buns had only bounced about 10 ticks, but the bobble had bounced maybe eight ticks or so. Now, if you're working on a rough ratio of three to one, even two to one, it's drawing in that period where the 3,000 lot or 5,000 lot came in, it's just ringing some alarm bells to say that, right, one of these markets is potentially a little bit mispriced, you know, which one's telling the true story, which one's lagging and which one needs to catch, which, which one is leading. So you're now not feeling too comfortable in this trade. Although you've scaled out most of your size in your buns, you've got some decent size still in your bobbles and it's not really showing much signs of a continuation to the downside. So still scaling out of his bun position. We've got the euro here, which I just want to draw your attention to. And I just want you to see what this euro starts to do. Now, the euro and the bonds should have inverse correlation um, based on any dovish or hawkish tilt from the ECB. So if this move is to be sustained to the downside, we should see the euro push up. Now actually what you're starting to see is the euro drift down. So just going to continue playing. So we're going more and more offside. And what this trader's actually done, he's got to a point where he's got more and more offside with the bobble. Everything's kind of clicked in, into place that, right, I am on the wrong side of this trade. However the market is interpreting this, you know, we've got 
the euro's starting to come down, the bun's bounced now 30 ticks, you know, I'm not heavily offside, but I'm offside and I'm not happy, I'm taking a loser. But knowing that it's ECB and knowing that, you know, the market is, there's a lot of expectation built into this market and the ranges are usually quite big, that if you can get on the reversal, you can still make this right. If it, if it tries to take the lows and fails, we've still got those 22s up the highs in, in the Bund and, you know, let's follow the flows and let's, let's trade with the flows here. So he's cut and reverse, it's 44 um, lots long in the, um, in the bubbles. He's still short in his bun position and he just wants to see what this bubble position does. As, as I said, it's a little bit of a thicker market before he reacts and cuts and reverses his buns. Okay, so bubble started to drift up a little bit and he's going a little bit on side. Just want to draw your attention to, you know, he's about 20k down at, at this point um, on the move. So whatever he does, you know, he doesn't want to get too aggressive without having the confirmation that the cut and reverse is right. You don't want to just be chopped to death now in the resulting um, chop fest that generally occurs after one of these big moves in the buns. But if he gets the confirmation, as I said, he still knows that there's still room to make this right. So he's 120 lots long in, in, in the bubbles. He's just cut and reversed his bun position, but with very small size, manageable size. He's just waiting to see what this um, bubble position does. He's starting to build more into it, up to 160 lots. And this thin bun is still flicking around and rotating around as you would expect in, in a thinner market. Scaling out of the bubble with, with some small clips and pay attention to what's happening with the euro. It's still, I hope that is the euro. Yep, it's still drifting down. We're just going to watch what that does now. You know, as he starts to go more on side, euro's still pushing down. It's bubble position, it's up to 150 lots still. Slightly offside with a bun, but quite comfortable as long as the bobble's leading. Now, anything that has reference to rates, which is what this comment, which um, this section of the press release that we feel has driven this reversal and this move, it's going to affect the five year more just because it's nearer term. So he wants to have most of his size in the five year. Um, it's probably a smoother market to participate in, as I've already mentioned, but it's not looking to go crazy in the bun just yet because what you don't want to be doing is adding 100 into the buns and then being subject to a blip back and you're five six, top, five, six ticks offside. You need to really manage this trade from an offside position and get yourself into a position where as the flows come in, if the euro starts to take the lows, then you can really start to get aggressive. So it's still just, Bun's just kind of flicking around, starting to go on side a bit, but still hasn't added in. Just scaling out gently of his, um, his bobbles. I just want to pay attention to the Bund now and just see as the bobble starts to go on side a little bit more, we see the Euro starting to approach the lows. Hasn't adjusted his size. Watch as soon as, okay. As soon as the Euro starts to take the lows, He's loaded up to 220 lots in the bubble. And as Euro continues to push down, he's now content with his size in the bubble. He's onside in the burns with his 40 lots. And he hasn't actually added into his burns. I think now he's just looking to manage that bubble position. It's quite large. You know, the burns going quite nicely onside. And we're, just want to pay attention to the buns as we approach the high of the day. As long as we see this euro start coming down, bun continuing to push up and the bubble continuing to push on the side, you know, you really got to be feeling that you're on the right side of this trade now. Something that also need to pay attention to is there's a lot of people that would have been selling these markets on that initial highlight, obviously pushed it down heavily. You know, we, 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 we nearly took that level. A lot of people would have been 
really committed to taking that level and actually selling more on the pullbacks. Now, at what point are they wrong? They're, they're already wrong, but at what point are they squealing and going to panic out of this? It's going to be as we start taking the highs, and that's where it's always an opportunity to um, you know, take some more. The, the, the most aggressive part of this reversal move is gonna be that final flush when people just panic and puke and get out. And that's gonna be the cleanest part of this move. So we're gonna to start to see the 22s coming into, um, into the screen on, um, on, the, on the Bund. Not too aware of any levels in, in um, the bubble, but just see how this trades towards those levels. So he's not adding any more into his bubbles, still just gradually scaling out, actually looking to get a bit more in to, um, okay. So the Buns, we've taken the day's high. He's laid some bids to be flicked in on the blip back as we've taken the highs. Been quite fortunate to get in. He's doubled or ad added more than doubled his position from about 40 lots up to 100 and 100 odd. Um, and now he's got his core position at 160 in the buns and he's looking to scale out and now just looking to, to work these positions and scale out efficiently. And as long as this euro is hugging the low, you know, you're really, really comfortable here. But does not want to let go of anything until these 22s are taken in the buns. That's a real clear target and a, a level that must go as long as the Euro's on the low, the bobble's pushing up through the highs, it has to go, okay, we're just breaching the highs again. We're at through 12s in the Bund. You know, he's still got 150 lots in uh, the bobble, and now just looking to scale out aggressively from his Bund position from 60 lots or so through these 22s. So just watch how he executes as we take that level and that final flush comes through. He's looking for probably a blip, maybe 10 ticks or so through. Bobbles nicely offside, you know, he's off, off, the, off the page on side um, in his bobble position. We're through those 22s level and he's scaling up very, very quickly. Now what he's actually done, as soon as he's scaled out, this is the class of the execution of this trader. You know, he recognises that, right, we've taken 22s, it was a clear level that has to go. Potentially can make a little bit more on the cut and reverse as we come back in from this. Bobble position, still well on side. And now he's just going to draw his attention to the bobble as his bun position is now tiny. But as long as this euro is stuck to the low, you know, he, this, this bobble could just keep going. You know, this, as I said, this is the core market with reference to rates that you want to be trading. So he's scaled out of a large portion of his position from about 120 lots down to um, 63 lots. He's just starting to pull back a little bit now and he's kind of chasing it down page a little bit. But not panicking, you know, still expecting that this should rotate higher as long as the euro keeps taking his lows. It's got a minor position in the buns, which is just using just a, why not, just a little bit of booster money. And now we've seen the euro bounce. It's just looking at how he's managing himself out of this bobble position. Now, just pay attention. He's down to 30 lots, but and he's cut and reverse again in the buns as we've pulled back from blipping through those 22s and just thinking now maybe we continue to trend. So anything that comes out from the ECB that's this significant, that moves the markets this much, you know, you often get a trend move that comes after it. So you know, he's always being astute to that in his mind. It's like if this is a big fundamental shift or a significant fundamental shift that the market's going to pay attention to, it's not just the initial move that you're looking to play. This, these highs should go in, in, the, um, in the bubble. And something that was really interesting to me talking to this trader is, you know, it doesn't matter how experienced you are, how much size you've got in, you're still critical of your own trading. You're still reflecting on it, looking back, thinking, how could I have improved on this? And one thing, although minor to my eyes, because it's been so successful, it's gone from 20K down to nearly 40K up, or more than 40K up, was that, Potentially, he scaled out a little bit too aggressively from this bubble position. You know, he was confident that these highs should go. So why, why should he have scaled out so much? But it's also the thinking when you've gone from offside 
to onside. It happens to even the most experienced traders that sometimes you're not necessarily as objective as you might wish to be or as objective as you can be when looking at it back. At it back. But just something to take from this is, you know, it's not that you've got to the stage where you know, you're clipping 200 bubbles and 150 buns and you, there aren't still ways that you can improve your execution.